are going to be joining me up here, and we've had no chance to rehearse anything, and in fact the latest presentation came in about an hour and a half ago. So I'm a little bit worried about running out of time, so if you'll forgive me, we'll just kind of plough through, I think, the session on Saturday, which is going to be a retention, will give us a little bit more scope for uh, interaction. A caveat to that um, is that a lot of this material would, would take hours or possibly even days to explore, and that's, that's something that's possible, um, particularly for the services around the room that are a little bit uh, less well resourced. And I guess I'm thinking here of uh, our, our colleague Arhel from uh, the Maldives, because I was up in my room last night and the sand was running through my fingers, and I thought, well, actually, what these people need is a one week workshop uh, covering some of this material. Um, so I'll, I'll see whether that happens after, uh, after the event. The, yeah, the last point I wanted to make was that uh, I think with the exception of David and Janice, um, I'm the only person in the room where English is my native language. And if I speak too quickly or if the language gets overly complex, then you know, put your hand up and I'll try and slow down and I'll, I'll try and simplify things a little bit. So the sessions um, today is going to be uh, recruitment. What I'll do in a second is just sort of five minutes on an introduction to, to me and, and my organization. I'd like to look at the global context uh, because I think it's important that we understand where we, where we sit in uh, the, the blood banking world and also understand that uh, the way in which we do things isn't necessarily mm -hmm. going to change anybody else's things. And then what we'll do, I'll, I'll do that for about an hour. I think we then have a break. And we'll then zoom in to look very specifically at some of the donor recruitment um, uh, tips and techniques and things that you can kind of take away and hopefully some of them you can apply back in your, your own services. And then Saturday we'll uh, look at the retention side of things. So a quick introduction. Uh, so once again, why I, I may have something to offer. I, I used to work as the senior manager for the blood service in England. And I was there for 15 years looking after uh, donor recruitment and management, uh, predominantly for blood, but I also looked after tissues and bone marrow and at that stage and also organ donation. And a little bit like the, you know, the train spot who wants to kind of collect everything in his book, I thought, well, actually, that's not quite enough. And what I do now, I'm, uh, I'm the board of directors for a charity that looks after or uh, encourages sperm and egg and embryo donation. So I'm kind of gradually through my career ticking off all of the things that. Um, you might be able to persuade people to, to give. And I, I think I've, I've still got a couple of things, but I've got, got a few years to work on that. I'm also a past president of the Association of Donor Recruitment Professionals, which some of you may have heard of. It's, it's, it's a little bit like this, but for people who recruit donors for a living as opposed to volunteering to um, recruit donors. It's US-based, um, I was quite happily involved in that. Um, I've got an MBA uh, and a marketing qualified service, you'll see, I quite like applying models to try and clarify thinking around things. A lot of what we do is, is quite complex and, and to my mind it's quite useful to just sort of break it down into the simplistic component part because once you reassemble those, it, it begins to hopefully make more sense. Um, before my um, English blood service experience, I spent a couple of years in development work overseas and then it is the bridge, if you like, between uh, what I used to do for the blood service and what I do now working for the charity Global uh, Blood Fund, which is predominantly US based, but uh, I'm based in London. And uh, the charity, as you'll be uh, alluded to, the mission is to assist blood services in low and middle income countries. We've got a concept of donors helping donors, which we can explore another time. Um, but what we do do is provide some leadership to get the blood banking community to help their own, because there's a huge amount of money sloshing around the blood banking industry, tens of billions of dollars, but it's predominantly in the US, it's in Europe, and it isn't generally uh, in excess in places in Africa and Asia and Latin America. So what we try to do is to partner with some of the big players in the industry, um, the, the, the vendors, the blood centers, the people who've got the money, and uh, amongst other things, we try to encourage them to share that resource with the uh, generally the southern part of the globe. And these are a few things that we do. Equipment, Gorky mentioned. Um, we do some training. Um, sometimes we do that ourselves, sometimes we pay other people to do it. Sometimes we move people from where they are to where the training is. So if anybody, particularly those from uh, Africa, would like to log onto our website, we've currently got applications open for a training pro 
programme with the South African National Blood Service. That we're paying to uh, send people down there at the end of January. So anyone who'd like to apply for that, please do. And then we do all sorts of other things, everything from um, making um, uh, PSA TV spots um, to giving away books to all sorts of things. It doesn't matter so much. So but having said it's not going to be very interactive, I'd just like to, to make a point by um, using the next few slides. So would anyone like to suggest to me what that's the picture of up on the screen? Okay, so if I put a different perspective on that, does that make it any same picture, just a different angle? Does that make it any clearer? A mass trap. A mass trap, yeah, absolutely. Um, so the sort of the general principle is, you know, you look at something from one angle, it's quite difficult to understand what you're looking at. You look at it from a different angle, maybe it makes more sense, you zoom out. Um, so really just to label the point and it's a bit of fun. Would anybody like to second on the first first one? Is it? The first one? Is it per? Mm -hmm. second, second one could could be, I'm okay. to say at this point. Four. It's a <laughs> so I think the second one, the zipper, was uh, already given. The third one, anybody for that? Plastic fork. Yeah, plastic fork. A fork at, uh, at any rate. And just a really, really difficult point. Um, the first one? Take, take, yeah, take, uh, take the Spencer, second one. Uh, money? Uh, yeah, very good. It's uh, <laughs> Zimbabwe, I think it's a hundred trillion dollar lot of dollars. Probably, probably. Probably worth about one eleven eleven. So actually you did pretty well there, I guess maybe with 50, 60 people in the room as well. What's the currency for the second It's a one hundred trillion dollars in Bob we had. It was uh, just before they reorganized the currency. Um, but the thing the, the So if you've got a, if you're somewhere in Africa and you've got a, a fairly basic health infrastructure, then one percent is probably enough because you don't have the cancer treatments and the heart surgeries and all of the other things, which means that in a more developed country, three percent, four percent might be um, the optimal number. So 
you know, you want to collect a number, and that's because it's, it's driven by your health economy. The second question is how much you're able uh, to collect. There are organizational resources that you need in order to collect sufficient blood. Uh, you need enough equipment. You know, you, you already mentioned this earlier. And a lot of people lack the kind of basic technology that many of us would uh, take for granted. You also need uh, staff, you need a sufficient number, you need to be um, sufficiently well trained, and uh, you also need donors. And, and as it's all of us know, donors are often a critical factor that is the difference between uh, failure and success. There are some other things um, in terms of able to play. You, you want a culture of altruism, which isn't always uh, present. Lots of people have tribal or family affiliations, the idea of giving for people that you don't know doesn't sit comfortably uh, culturally and often there's a mistrust of government and a, a fear of the health consequences of, of donating blood. And finally there's a question of how much you are able to process. Often this isn't given very much thought but if you're able to play, break blood into its component parts then you've got one donor helping uh, three people potentially rather than one donor helping one person. So all of those three things, when you're deciding how much blood you need, have, have got to be taken together to decide the, uh, the blood requirements for your country, and therefore the, the task that you're going to be setting yourself, the dream that you're going to need to pursue.